Alicia Garza, project director at the National Domestic Workers Alliance and co-founder of the national movement Black Lives Matter, welcome to Evening Edition. Thank you for having me. Now, Alicia, this started as a social media hashtag. We saw a lot of it during events uh, surrounding the deaths of Ferguson and Garner, but it actually started before that. So how did the movement Black Lives Matter actually begin? Uh, Black Lives Matter started actually in 2013 as a national organizing project after George Zimmerman was acquitted in the murder of Trayvon Martin. Um, folks like Patrice Cullors and Opal Tometi, who are co-founders of Black Lives Matter, each of us felt deeply that it was important for us to build a base of people who were ready to counter anti-black racism, which permeates our society. And so Black Lives Matter is really a call and response. It's a response to the virulent anti-black racism that our society faces and struggles with, and it's a call to action that we take the time to dismantle that. Sure, and I'm glad you said that. My next question was about this. The, the, are there specific demands or, or call to action uh, from the movement? Absolutely. Well, they're the same demands that people have been fighting for for a long time. We stand on the shoulders of giants, folks who have made sure that we have a seat at the table and that we're able to participate in our nation's democracy, that we're able to uh, live in full dignity and respect, that we're able to make wages that support our families, that we have full housing and employment, and then of course that we stop and stem the tide of police brutality that's ravaging our communities. So there's certain call to actions, as you said. What, what might be some examples of that? Well, so for example, one of the things that we've been calling for is for our federal government to collect data on officer-involved shootings, which they don't currently do. We've also been calling for a reduction or an elimination of federal funding for the militarization of our police departments. There's no reason that our police departments need tanks, bazookas, and flash grenades in local communities. Let me ask you about this. We've also seen the hashtags, all lives matter and police lives matter. Uh, what's your take on those messages? Of course all lives matter, but we live in a society where black lives are systematically devalued and in fact targeted for destruction and demise. And so if we really want to build a world where all lives matter, then it means that we will fight like hell today for black lives. And what about the police lives matter? Police lives matter as well. And again, I think the issue here is that we have a system of policing that often functions in a discriminatory way. And so most police would tell you that they got into the profession not to be discriminatory, but to help people. And so what we want to see is a complete transformation of policing so that we can actually solve problems in our communities as opposed to criminalize them. No, as you mentioned, this movement got started back in 2013 after Trayvon Martin. What kind of changes or have you seen any changes uh, since this got started? Well, one of the big shifts that we've seen is a cultural and hegemonic shift where we're talking about race and racism in our society in a way that we haven't in decades, quite frankly. Uh, this movement has encouraged President Obama to speak on race twice in his presidency, which he hadn't been doing, and he's been in office for more than six years now. So we're seeing a real shift in a kitchen table conversation that's happening in households across the country that are really trying to figure out how do we rid our society of anti-black racism so that we can live in a fully dignified and humanized society. Now, you will be doing a free public discussion later tonight That's at right. the uh, Malcolm X Library in Valencia Park, correct? That's right. Uh, what are you going to talk about there? I'm going to talk about the origins of the Black Lives Matter movement. I'm going to talk about solidarity between social movements, and I'm also going to talk about racism and what it really is, because oftentimes we talk about it as if it's people being mean to each other, when in fact it, they are systems that are backed by power that impact the outcomes of people's lives. Uh, how would you like to see this movement move forward, I either politically or on a grassroots level? Wh what direction would you like to see it go? I'm really excited for the opportunity to talk about the totality of black lives. And so not just about police brutality, but about unemployment, about the lack of education, about the increase in suspensions, particularly amongst black girls. I'm excited also to talk about incarceration in this country and how we can cut mass incarceration so that we don't have millions of people behind cages, but instead that we realign folks with their families to better our communities once and for all. Um, you've been in San Diego for a few days now, giving that's these right. free public discussions. You're a graduate of UC uh, San Diego, yes, correct? That's correct? Okay. Um, what kind of feedback are you getting from the San Diego area here on this movement? I'm getting a lot of love here. It's really incredible to come back after more than 13 years. 
uh, where I started as a student activist and a student organizer, and it's really powerful to see the work that people have been doing since I've been gone. Are you surprised of the, uh, the response here, that, that it's, it's reached San Diego, so to speak, even though these mm -hmm. events didn't happen here? No, 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 and certainly there are police killings that happen in San Diego, oh, sure. but um, I'm not surprised at the reception that I'm getting. I think that uh, what we've seen is that the movement is growing worldwide, and that this is really touching the hearts and minds of people all over. So I'm excited and I'm humbled and ready to be here. Alicia, thanks so much. Thank you for having Appreciate me. Appreciate you being here. Now you can talk with Alicia Garza, co-founder of the movement Black Lives Matter. She'll be speaking tonight from 7 to 8.30 at the Malcolm X Library in Valencia Park. Her discussion is free and open to the public. More information at kpbs.org.